Hello, my name is Christopher, and today I'm going to show you how to install Link Warden on Portainer. So, a little bit about this series, I'm going over home labs, you're installing things, getting things set up, everything like that. So, if you're interested in that, subscribe, comment, like, and support the channel, and let's get started. I wanted to let y'all know about the Big Bear community. We just launched a uh, community on community.bigbeartechworld.com. It's based on Discourse, so go on there, join it, and uh, say hi. So... Let's get back to your registered programming. So this is what we'll be installing today, a Link Warden. It's a self-hosted collaborative bookmark manager to, to collect, organize, and preserve web pages and articles. This is what it looks like. It's got a nice user interface. Um, Organize collected links and web pages, compact list view, viewer collections, team management, readable view, multiple formats to archive, share your collections with the world. And here's some features right here. So that's what we'll be installing today. So I'm going to be starting on Big Bear Video Assets. There will be a link down in the YouTube description to get to this. And I'm going to type in search link. And then I'm going to go to Link Warden on Portainer right here. And then I'm going to go to the Docker Compose. So a version 3 of Docker Compose file format is being used. I'm going to set services. And the first service underneath the services is called Link Warden. The container name is going to be called Big Bear Link Warden. And then the image is coming off of GitHub because this URL right here. This is the Docker image. And then this is the Docker image tag. Restart unless stop. So that means if you stop it for no reason, it will not try to restart. But if it fails or any other reason, then it will try to restart. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to set volume. So this is the local volume. It's defined down at the bottom. And then this is on the host. And then on the right side is the container. So data, uh, da data. And then environment variables are set. So the database URL to connect to the po PostgreSQL. And then next auth secret. And then the next auth URL. And then the next public disable re registration. And then I'm going to set some ports, so 3,000 on the host, 3,000 on the container. If this does collide with another port on your host, you can change it. Um, but um, do not change the container's port. Um, so I'm going to put it in a network, and this is defined down at the bottom too. So now Link Warden DB, and then the container name is going to be called Big Bear Link Warden DB. Th th this runs with, with the service up here, so there we go. And then this is the user, this is the password, and then this is the database that's created, and this is the port. So um, these environment variables should align with up here, the database URL. So the image is Postgres, and then it's coming off Docker Hub by default, and then restart unless stopped, and then that means if you stop it for a reason, it will not try to restart, but if it fails for any other reason, then it will try to restart. Mm -hmm. And then the environment variables of Postgres user and then Postgres password and then Postgres DB. Once these, once this a database service is created, you can't change these environment variables. So you will need to do that on your uh, SQL. So volumes to be mounted. So the link warden DB, that's a local volume that's defined down here. And then this is on the host. And then this is on the container of varlib Postgres QL data. Do not change the container side. And then networks, I'm going to put it in the network. So now I'm going to define the network. So link warden network, it's going to be a bridge. And then now volumes are down here. So link warden uh, data. And then that is going to be a local vo volume. And then link warden D DB, and that's going to be a local volume as well. So I'm going to go over here to copy raw file, click it. Then I'm going to go over to my portainer and get it set up and installed. So I wanted to let you know uh, about the Big Bear Club. Uh, 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 you can join it, and it greatly supports this channel, and I very much appreciate it. So uh, if you'd like to join the Big Bear Club, you can go down the YouTube description and uh, go to my Ko-Fi link and join it from there. So let's get back to registered programming. So now I'm going to start on my portainer. I'm going to go to uh, Local, Stacks, and then add stack up here. I'm going to type in a stack name of um, link warden stack. And then this does run uh, 
a Docker Compose underneath. So Portainer stacks use Docker Compose uh, in the Docker engine. So I'm going to go to Web Editor down here. I'm going to paste in the Docker Compose that I explained over in Big Bear Video Assets that we copied. And then I'm going to say deploy the stack down here. Now, what this is doing is it's downloading the Docker image from the registry, getting them extracted, and getting them up with Docker Compose underneath. So, this can take a little bit. So, now we got it up and running and stack successfully deployed. So, we got it done. So, now I'm going to go over the stack options. So, I'm going to go into my stack right here. So, you'll see stack, editor, you'll see the actions down here, stop the stack, delete the stack, create template from the stack, stack duplication slash migration, and then you can see all your containers that are running in the stack, and then you can see your access controls. So, you can come down here, to, uh, you can come up here to editor, and um, you can see the Docker compose and edit it, and once you get done editing, you can come down here to update the stack. Now, if you want to re uh, pull the image and redeploy, that means it repulls a fresh image off the registry and then redeploys it. So uh, this would update the code if the developer pushes it to the same ta tag, like la latest, then you, you would be able to get the changes that they deploy. So I'm going to go cancel. So now I'm going to go into the cont containers once you're in the stack. Um, so you'll see the containers down here, and you can go into them by clicking them. And um, so you have actions up here. So start, stop, kill, restart, pause, resume, remove, recreate, duplicate, slash, edit. You can see the container status down here. You can also go in the logs, great for debugging, inspect, stats, console, attach, and then access controls, and then the create image. And then the container details, like the port configuration, the left side is the host, the right side is the container, the command, entry point, environment variables, and then the labels, and then the restart policy. You can click this, and you can change the restart policy, and then update. And then the volumes that were created, the networks that were created down here. So, if you go backwards, and you go back to the, the stack, you can go into this one and set same thing with this one and the same options. So that's a little bit about the container options. So now in the browser, I will go to the portainers IP address and then port 3000. So I'm going to go to it. And then now we can add a user by signing up. So I'm going to sign up. I'm going to put a username and password in. And then now once you do that, a display name, a username, and a password, and confirm password, I'm going to sign up. Now, you'll need to re-enter that, so admin, and then whatever password you put in, or whatever username you put in as well. So I'm going to log in now. So now, you'll be on the admin screen, and um, you can add a new link by clicking here. And then, let's add a new link real quick, so big bear tech world. And then um, you can see more options. So you can name the link. You can put a description on the link. You can add a tag. So I'm going to add a tag real quick. And then um, now you can cr create the link. So now you can see the link down here. You can go to all links and see the all links. You can see all collections. You can add a new collection, like a testing collection. You can also put a description. You can add a color. So I'm going to create the collection so you can see it right here you can go into it and you can create a new link in this collection you can also go out of here and um, go to the dashboard and I'm gonna put that uh, this link in the collection so here we go I'm gonna put in the testing collection now you can go to all collections you can see that there the link is now in there you can see who created the collection you can see edit collection info share and collaborate delete the collection you can also go to pins, and you can see no pins right now, but I'm going to go to all links again. I'm going to go to this and then pin to dashboard. So now we've pinned the link. So if you go back to pins, you can now see the pinned links. You can search the links like that, and um, you can go into the tags, and you can see the links in the tags. So um, you can also switch to light and dark mode. You can come up here to have a quick way of creating a new link or creating a new collection. 
You can change it to list view or card view. You can sort and then you can go up to the user icon up here. You can go to settings and um, you can go to appearance, archive, and then API keys, and then you can change your password. So um, you can switch to light and dark mode from here as well. And you can also log out. So that's a little bit about the Link Wardens UI. So I just went over step by step on getting Link Warden working on Portainer. So if you like this tutorial, subscribe, comment, like, and support the channel. And if you have any video suggestions or, or you need community support, you can go out in the Big Bear community and join our forum. There's a link in the YouTube description. So stay tuned for more.